What will you do if your part is too big to fit on your 3D printer? Hey everybody, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video. Today, we're gonna talk about what to do when your part is too big to fit on your 3D printer. We'll start to uh, slice it up. And uh, thanks to Billy for uh, requesting this video. My email address is down in the description of this video. Send me, uh, send me one of those if you have any future topics you would like me to cover in these videos. This is just an attempt to add a little bit more value to your experience. So let's get into Fusion 360. So this was actually a, a part we did in live stream number 188. Um, STL files, bringing them into Fusion, turning them solid. Um, that's probably what you would like to do if you got to do this here. I'll leave a description down in uh, in this video for live show number 188 so you can check it out. But I'm going to go over to our model environment and I'm going to do another thing I like to do. I'm going to right click and say capture design history. That will kind of give you that history line down there. So Billy and anybody else who cares, um, I'm going to give you three different ways that uh, you could attack this. So the first thing you probably want to do is, again, I turn it into a solid. You'll see I have one body here. But I'm actually going to cut this part uh, in half, right? We're going to have to section it up into different pieces so you maybe can move them around. And, and the biggest thing is to cut it, but then also, of course, how do we kind of like glue it back together again? So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my origin on. And if you look at this part here, you actually have kind of like three different planes going through this part. If I go in and say offset plane and I select this plane here, I can offset a plane uh, out here. So I'm going to find a place where, you know, this is probably like the minimum of whatever can fit within within your within your print bed here. And I'm just going to make something up uh, on the go here. But you can put in a distance up here um, and you will get that plane. So I'm going to make sure that it's somewhere around here and hit OK. And I now have this offset plane sitting right in there. Now, if you go to modify, you can go and you can actually say split body. So if I click on that, I select the one body, body 13. But then if I select that plane, it's actually going to cut with that plane. And now you will see I end up with two bodies. So I kind of have two halves. So if I turn off the light bulb 14, you will see we got one and turn 13 off and uh, we got we got another. So uh, then we've just kind of like cut the part in half. And you can, of course, do this multiple, uh, multiple places, um, depending on, you know, we could create offset planes and cut these much smaller, smaller distances. So that is kind of like tip number one. How do you cut your model? There you go. Um, now, when we put them to back together again, I kind of think there's three different ways that, that it makes sense to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide uh, number number 13 for a second. So just kind of like looking at this one here. I'm actually going to hide that a construction plane too. That was my dad. I'm going to go ahead and open a sketch on this face here. So now we're looking right at that face. C for circle. And I'm just going to draw up some kind of a uh, diameter circle here. Um, and I'm going to make it horizontal or vertical. Sorry. There. D for dimension. I probably also want to control uh, this somewhat. So I now have a 50 millimeter, I have a 30, 30 millimeter circle, 50 millimeters up vertical from there. Q for press pull, right? And we can extrude this out. Let's do 10 millimeters, hit okay. And we now have something. This is probably, this reminds me of like action figure, kind of if part needed to rotate possibly, um, you, could, you could do this. Now, of course, the thing is that um, if I turn 13 back on um, and 14 off, we don't have a hole there. So you could sketch the same thing again, um, 30 millimeters, cut it instead of 50, but there's actually a, a better way, um, or an easier way, I should say. See, what we have right now, this is another tool I've never shown in a live stream. If you go up here, there's actually under inspect, there's interference. And if we select these two and say compute, you can actually see where it's sitting right there, interfering between the two, right? I'll start. What we can use is we can use the combine tool. <laughs> it's misleading because we're not going to combine anything here. But if we hit combine 
And we, instead of joining, it's going to do a cut. We select our target body. So if we select this part here that don't have the hole in it, we then select the tool body, what's going to be the one that has to start. And I'm going to make sure that key tools is selected. If you don't, then this is going to disappear. So I'm going to make sure that's checked. Hit OK. Now, nothing really happened on the screen. But if we go back and we, we hide 14, you will now see we have that hole right there that will match up with um, with the stuff that I just that I just created. Now um, I have talked about this before. So actually, one way we can do go back to inspect. We could do a uh, section analysis, and if we just look at this section, you can kind of see um, where those two will intersect right there. Um, so that will give you an idea. Now, I've done live streams about tolerances with 3D printing and all these things. Uh, you might want to add that later on to this. This kind of like depends on what you want to do or you sand it down or whatever. You squish it together a little bit and then maybe it fits. That is all your 3D printer. This is not, that's not Fusion. So this is one way. Uh, now, another way to do this, uh, this is all great, uh, but since it's, it's a start, then it can kind of rotate around. We could also do something else. Let's get back into our original sketch here. Oh, and let's just hide that one. Go back to our original circle. And let me just delete that, actually. Um, let's just select that, delete. Um, another thing we could do was let me create a line from here. And I'm just going to create that vertically up there. And I'm going to make it, I don't know, let's make it 60. 75 maybe. Um, another thing we could do is if I draw a, a another two point rectangle, and sometimes if you if you feel like you see how it's picking up edges behind, see how it comes up with blue curves. You can actually hold down Control and it will not pick them up on your keyboard or command on a Mac. But what I actually sometimes like to do is to go down here and just sketch that whatever rectangle I want. It just seems to be a little bit easier to uh, to do it. Do it down here. So I'm going to sketch a rectangle down here. I'm actually going to add a couple of uh, some fillets to it. Select some fillets. Do that there. Okay, so we added some fillets to the part here. And if I now go over and say I want the midpoint of this line to this one over here, boom. Then it moves it over there and uh, it fully defined. And it's all set. So, so, so drawing it down here can actually make it a little bit easier. All right. Uh, now, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit um, my Q for press pull. And uh, let's make sure my sketch is showing. And uh, I'm going to select this here. Now, before, you saw me just going straight out. We could do this. And, uh, and now, at least, if we did this and, and, com and did what we did before, um, where we, we then use the combine tool, then at least we will have taken off the, the, the point where it can, can, can rotate. Um, but you could, if we go back in and edit that function, you could also use a command that I just talked about in a couple of videos ago, and that's the, we could add some, some taper to it and actually make it more of a kind of a cone shape here and now you actually maybe just get a, a, a tighter not so much a, um, a a press fit but now more like a, a lineup fit on here and of course I will do what I did what I did before um, turn the other one on and uh, go in and do the combined cut so again the target body is now this one the tool body is this one and hit OK and if again if I High 13, you will see we kind of have that that cut in there. Again, tolerance is for your 3D printer. I'm, I've done live streams on that and videos on that. I'm not going to talk about that here. The last thing I want to show you, Billy, um, I hope this is useful. Um, you, let, <laughs> you let me know. Uh, the last one is, is I think, is kind of cool. And I've definitely used this one more in the metal industry than, than in 3D printing. But what you could do was um, I went all the way back and deleted things here, create another sketch on the back side here. And uh, I'm just gonna hit alpha line. I'm gonna draw a line kind of from the midpoint here, draw a line out and make 
what we uh, what we call kind of like a dovetail style. Uh, so let's do a D for dimension. Let's make it 60. 60 is probably fine. Whatever you want to do, uh, whatever you want to do with this dovetail. Um, there's no rules for that. Add fillets, whatever, whatever you want. I'm gonna hit the Q, press pull here, and uh, and you could drag it all the way through, but maybe you just want it up a little bit like this. Again, like I said, um, you could add some fillers to it. I'm just gonna go in and do a mirror, have faces selected, and you actually just need to select a couple of faces here. Mirror plane is this face. Now you kind of have a dovetail uh, created. Like I said, I would probably, just for strengthening things, you would probably add some fillers to it. But again, um, just to get it to, to the end here, hit the combine tool, but don't combine, use the cut. This is our target body. This is our tool body. Okay, and now we have uh, that cut in, um, in this part here. So now you could just kind of like, maybe press it down on there and glue it glue it in. Useful? I surely hope so. <laughs> At least that's the attempt. Thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you don't. And of course, if you have any, if you have any tips or tricks, put them down in the comment area. Let's, uh, let's share the knowledge here. I absolutely appreciate that you took the time to watch the video. Billy, thank you so much for emailing me. That is down in the description area for uh, this topic. And until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks. Yeah.